Hello and welcome back to the Trail Manners Podcast. This is Single Track Session and it's episode number 303. Today is February the 18th, 2021 and I'm your host Eric Manning and uh, we've got some fun things to talk about this week. Some racing is back in full swing, like full on racing and we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, But let's go ahead and just preface this. I know there's a lot going around in the country right now, um, weather-wise and, you know, Texas. uh, Boy, my my thoughts are with everybody down there. Um, Just a quick reminder, um, stay safe, folks, Um, whatever you're doing, whether it's because of the the weather that's going on, um, just in general. We we had some tragic news this week here in in Utah, in the local area of a, a person that had a fatal accident, and we just want to make sure, stay safe out there, everybody. Uh, no matter what you're doing, just stay safe, whether it's weather, uh, going out on a run, uh, on your own, things like that. Make sure people know where you're at and um, just practice good judgment. Um, let's start with that. So stay safe from the Trail Manners podcast, please. And we'll get started with Beer of the Week. This week's Beer of the Week, to get us rolling here, is from Moab Brewing Company in Moab, Utah. It's the FMU Double IPA. Um, IBUs 137, 9.6 ABV. Um, This one's, we'll get to that in a minute. But first taste of this one, the smell, fantastic. Uh, Smells great. They do uh, talk about it a little bit, and they, you know, very hoppy, obviously, is a double. Um, Pine, citrus notes, and some floral aroma. I struggle to find some of that with this one. Um, I don't really taste much of the pine or the citrus notes, to be honest with you. And again, this is a can, so I don't know the shelf life. But it just seems like it's the, the taste or the the flavor profile is taken over by the, I don't know, just it tastes like alcohol, right? And it kind of, you know, that strong taste when you get, especially up there in some ABVs, but uh, really not one... Hopefully, it's just a stinker can, to be honest with you. Um, I haven't tried this one before. I do like Moab Brewing Company. Uh, they have some good stuff down there. But uh, this one, if I were to rate it today, and I apologize, I wrote I rate it two. A two out of five whatevers. Um, you name it. Stars. Hops. I'm staying away from the cheese curds. But yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely not one of my favorites. I probably will try it again. Um, and fun fact, and we'll get to that too later, is I'm headed to Moab this weekend. Maybe I'll try one on tap um, at the brewery there or, or get one a little fresher. Maybe it's got a different flavor profile. You never know how long a can's been sitting around. Um, but yeah, I just didn't taste um, any of the notes they talked about. So as of right now, it's a two. And maybe we'll come back and talk about it again. Again, Moab Brewing Company, the FMU Double IPA. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, not definitely for my taste. Um, one of my favorites. So again, send your beer suggestions my way if you want me to review something, talk about it, or you know, give it a try. Let's talk races. It has been so long for me and the world. We've had races scattered, right? Here and there, uh, tweaks with protocols, um, different things. Some organizations have done better than others as far as able to put them on um, safely. Um, But this weekend is kind of, it was a big weekend. Not that there haven't been some in the past, but historically, and I'll date myself a little bit um, year-wise, not like, you know, go out and share dinner with myself date, but the Moab Red Hot 50K. Um Great friend of the show, awesome individual. Chris Martinez came out with this race a long time ago. Um, we love Chris, um, and we miss him. We miss Chris a lot. He was the he was the man. Uh, we we appreciate everything he did for the running community. Moab Red Hot came around early on um, in the racing scene, and being in February, this used to be the kickoff race of the year. This used to be the one you did not want to miss. Um, it's usually held, um, like Valentine's ish weekend. Um, but it was, it was one of my first real out of town, um, type races like this. It's on a solid course that'll beat you up and spit you out. Fast times are coming down on it. Um, but the Moab red hot is one I still recommend people do. If you get the opportunity, it, it, it 
does draw people from all over uh, the U.S. It has been taken over by Mad Moose, um, and they do a fantastic job with all their races. Um, Justin Ricks and you know his family and, and volunteers and friends. And I still love the course, and I love the race, and I really wanted to run it this year. This is the first year the race has been held uh, with Chris not being uh, or with us. And so my, my thought was, I'm going to go down. I want to run this race, you know, just to kind of channel my, the old schoolness, channel, you know, a little bit for Chris. Um, but the, the course changed um, because this race is a, a point-to-point, so they had a shuttle. So I had to change it kind of an out and back, and I just thought, you know, I don't want to run an out and back on that course. Um, and it's not that the course is bad. The reason I didn't want to run it is personal. Um, but it, it, it went off this weekend and it was literally the funnest race because that's used to be the race. Like I mentioned, that was like the first one of the year. So you've got done with your, your fall races and there wasn't a lot of winter racing years and forever ago. Um, when the, these guys came out with, Moab Red Hot. So it was kind of like your your next hobby or running was a dull. This was the kickoff. And all the big hitters had come out, all the big runners, the big names, and we would go down and just have a blast. It was at uh, Eddie McStiff's that's no longer down in the same spot there in, in Moab, the uh, pre and post race. It was an event. It was a celebration of trail running. And that went and happened this weekend along with the Black Canyon Ultras, which is a big race, a um, few distances there. And another one that's just huge now, uh, not that it hasn't been, but again, the Terrawera down in New Zealand. I know there's other races out there. When we talk about races, we'll bring up a few every week if there's some out there. And these are the three I picked to talk about this week. Um, Moab Red Hot, they have two distances, a 55K and a 33K. Um, again, different course. So, to me, obvious course records fall being a new course. It's not run on before. Uh, Anthony Costellis out of Salt Lake City uh, took first for the men in the 55K at 340, followed by Kieran Ney and Gordon Giannini. And folks, if you've listened to my podcast in the past, you know I'm horrible with names. I slaughter them and I apologize. I try, but I know I mess them up. So if I do, I'm apologizing up front. It's not personal because as you know, Eric with an A, it gets messed up all the time. So I should carry a little bit more into this and, and look for them. But um, that's the top three. It is cool to see a name on this list. Uh, f- running fifth is Brendan Trimboli out of Durango. Uh, it's a name that I've known and met a long time ago. So it's always fun when these names pop up on races for me that I haven't seen or heard from in a long time. Uh, good person. There's a lot. I mean, the the 55K, uh, 125 finishers. Uh, on the on the female side, um, we've... Uh, Meredith Edwards out of Durango took first in 4:42, uh, followed by Jane Moss out of Salt Lake and Gwen Rudy from Leadville. Um, so awesome! It's so awesome to be reading race results. And yes, there have been some races that trickled in in the fall and early, but for me, this is near and dear to my heart. Uh, the Moab Red Hot, and in the 33k distance, which is that's a tough sucker. Uh, on the men's side, uh, Josh Eberly from Gunnison in 2.06. Two hours, six minutes for the 33K. Jeff Kuno from uh, Gibson, Colorado. And Chris McQuivy from Flagstaff, Arizona round out the top three for the men. And on the females, it was Brittany uh, Carbono from Denver. Bonnie Kaminsky out of Salt Lake, who was a Woody Footy winner just recently. And Celia Stockwell, um, 218, 230, and 249 on the women's uh, 33K. So super excited that Moab went off uh, without a hitch. I haven't heard anything negative or worked on. It sounds like they did a great job, which we would expect. They've had a few races uh, on the Mad Moose side, so they know what they're doing. Uh, but man, I did I tell you how exciting it is to be talking about race results? It's exciting. And again, I know there's people out there that maybe shouldn't think racing should be going on for whatever reason, but here's the deal. These, you have to get a permit. So they're doing everything within the controlled COVID plan, right? So they have to meet certain standards. So as long as they're doing that, I think, um, I think you're fine. So let's talk about Black Canyon. So this is a race myself and Joel, we used to have on our schedule. We always wanted to do the Black Canyon races. Air Viper puts this on, and you know that's going to be legit. 
they've done such an incredible job of live coverage, um, drone footage, um, you know, out on the course streaming, you know, there's lags here and there, but you got to expect that. I would sure like to see an organization, whether it's Aravipa, maybe they take after them and start doing this more. How would it be to have some drone footage if you could, and you can, and can in some areas on course stuff, um, like a Western States or a hard rock and, you know, all these different areas with what, what you can do just more live streaming coverage. I think that's pretty cool. So my hat's off to uh, Aravipa, Black Canyon Ultras, because it was super cool to kind of take glimpses of what's going down. And I think most of us have talked, uh, you know, in the trail running community, how you miss running. You miss races. The the getting together, I know, again, pros and cons. Um, we're not talking about that. But getting together, because trail running, ultra running, that's what kind of it is, right? It's your tribe. It's your people. It's reconnecting. It's meeting new people. And it's just being there. Um, it's the experience, that personal connection. Um, they, they have two races down there, the hundred K and the 60 K, um, hundred K eight hours, six minutes, Tyler green out of Portland, Oregon, Eric Sensman, Flagstaff, Arizona, and Nick Curry from Scottsdale, eight ten and eight sixteen, And this is a golden ticket race for the big one. So congratulations for the golden ticket winners there on the men's side. On the female side, um, super stellar times, top 10. And we, me and Joel talk about this a lot. Uh, the ladies are going to start crushing um, races, top 10, outright wins, everything. Uh, Brittany Peterson from Pocatello was first for the ladies at 848, followed by Lisa Roberts from Tucson and Sarah Keys from New York at 918. Um, awesome. I still want to go to this race. I want to get out there. I want to run it. That'd be super fun. 60K, um, obviously shorter distance. F- coming in at five hours on the button with, you know, we'll throw them 30 seconds. On the ladies' side, Rachel Drake out of Portland, seventh overall. Leah Yingling from Salt Lake, 508, ninth overall. And third for the ladies is Kareen Salvoy from Castle Rock, Colorado in 509. So a two super tight grouping realistically uh, for the top three ladies there um, in the 60K and great placing, 7, 9, and 10. So three women in the top 10 of the 60K um, down there. And on the men's side in 417, Aubrey uh, Meyer from Venice, California, Charlie Ware from Tucson, and William Baldwin from Flagstaff, 417, 426, and 436. So some sweet times. There's a lot of people at this one, man. There are a lot. So racing's kicking off. And the next one we're going to talk about, and here's, I'm going to throw a thing out before we go over the results, right? If anybody is listening to the podcast that has done this race and wants to shoot me a message at manners at trailmanners.com, I want to get some beta, like the travel to it and a little bit of the rundown of what it's about, like there, not the race itself. I'll take some of that, but just the overall, um, I was experience, but, uh, to get down there, what's entailed when you're there, how the week looks like. It's the Tarawera Ultra Marathon in New Zealand. This looks incredible in all the ways. Um, I, I recommend you head over to their website just to check out some of their videos if you're not as familiar with it. These are the type of races I think that just for me would be awesome. Um, they have different race distances. They have a 100 miler. Um, they've got a 102K. They've got a 50, they've got a 21, and that's, I think that's about it. So on the in the 100 miler on the men's side from the U.S., Matt Urbanski um, took home first place, 1804. Um, Doug Moore from New Zealand in 1911, and Louis Schindler uh, in third, also from New Zealand. On the women's side, Katie Wright in 2019, Fiona Havis and Don Tuffery, all from New Zealand, round out the women's top three. And as you can imagine, this time of year with travel and everything, if you look at the start stuff, I was interested to see who traveled, right? This is a little bit different than heading to Moab or heading to Arizona. This is New Zealand. Um, And there were people from all over the world, but it was definitely New Zealand heavy, um, which you would probably expect um, from that race. In the 100, 102, uh, uh, okay, the 50 and the 21, top three men and women in all those events were from New Zealand. So Matt Urbanski, out of all the races, was the only one not from New Zealand uh, that finished top three according to the results. So 
but it looks like an incredible race. I was kind of looking at it a little bit, looking at airfare. Um, I'd really like to do that. That would be like a, a week, right? You go down, you run the race and if you're on the hundred, you get a, a really cool amulet. Um, but you don't on the other one. So that kind of makes it, you want to do the hundred, but it's early in the year and I don't know, but it looks cool. I'd also like to do black Canyon. I know I've said that for years. It's a doable, it's close enough, but boy, I just, I, this early in the year is hard for me to squeeze a long run. Um, I used to do the red hot 55 K quite a few times, you know, that's different when tell you, you know, the, the higher mileage early in the year is tough, especially with what mother nature throws at you sometimes makes it difficult to train. Um, like you really truly should or want to, but anyway, super pumped to be talking about races right now. February, early on, three big ones, three you know popular ones for sure. Um, hopefully, we keep trending safely in that direction. Um, I know with all the stuff going on, it's difficult. And my hat's off to all the race directors, volunteers, uh, health department people for working together on all these things. Again, um, obviously, there's protocols and there's things that people have to follow, but it's great to see the sport coming around a little bit more on the, in the, the racing side, if you will. Um, cause like I mentioned last year, I did a lot of just travel, you know, runcations, which I'm headed to Moab this weekend, uh, for one, uh, head down Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and do just kind of get out, find some dirt. Um, I love to get away in the wintertime once or twice if possible to somewhere, I don't know, a little warmer for sure, but also just to run on dirt. We just got pounded with a bunch of snow here around the Wasatch front. It's been dangerous on the avalanche side, but just in general, there's just a lot of snow. So the running is, is, oh, it makes you sore. You're working all those little stabilizer muscles, muscles you didn't know you had. And it just, it puts in some, it makes you work, but I'd love to get down and just cruise on some dirt. And so head down to Moab, reached out on social media, found some cool routes to go uh, with dogs. Um, down there. I'm super excited to get away and maybe explore a little bit. So hopefully we'll have some pictures and some videos of uh, the experience down there because the next month and two, three months is going to be super busy here at the Trail Manor's mothership. Um, so it's going to be nice to get away, kind of recharge after the holidays, all this snow hit, and then what's heading forward. Because as you know, we didn't have a show on Tuesday. Um, we had a, a guest that couldn't make it. Um, but we have a great show next Tuesday and the following Tuesday already lined up. And I'm really excited about both of those. Um, one of them has been on the podcast before. The other is new behind the microphone uh, for us. But a, uh, I would like to say a longtime friend of the show. Um, so we have a couple great podcasts coming up and more scheduled after that. So Really looking forward to just keeping it going on Tuesdays and Thursdays for you. Um, as we get later into the year, we might tweak it a little bit and go every other week on Tuesday, but keep Thursdays rolling. But we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, time is muy importante, so we'll see how that works out. Hot topics. What's going on in trail running, right? What What's happening out there? And I think a lot of it is we're getting back out, right? I mean, people are starting to get back out a little bit more. Um, and again, we'll, we'll just say whatever it means to you, just be safe, be careful, be smart, um, be supportive, please, of everybody and, and what you're doing out there because it, uh, it's a love, it's a love for what we do. And as I mentioned before on our community page on the face and on the Facebook, um, there's a safe community page to ask questions and be a part of that. So you're more than welcome to head on over there. It's just our trail manners community page, super catchy uh, name for it. Um, so hope you all enjoy that. I'm going to jump into Woody footy. Cause this is one um, that was tough this week and I we're getting there. Folks keep spreading the word every Sunday on the trail manners, Facebook page. We do the Woody footy. Where'd your feet take you? All you do is post a cool photo from one of where your foot feet or foot took you that week. Tell us where it's at. Have a great photo. That photo will be the graphic, beautiful art for the single track session for the week. And you're in a drawing for Woody Footy of the Month, which turns into Woody Footy of the Year, and we will have prizes. And it's just fun to see where people go, and it's fun to see 
names coming back around that we've had doing this before and new people. So let's go down. I'm going to just share a few with you. Uh, we had some great island running um, on Antelope Island here locally from Preston Wood and a few others. We also had another island that we'll get to. Uh, Andrew Giles, minus 18 degrees Celsius. He said it was balmy, um, so he didn't go far in Edmonton. And that the picture's gorgeous, and because of the temperature, I just it just looks cold. Um, yikes, that's just cold. Uh, James Varner, right? He posted a picture ice skating for the first time at 43 years old. And he looks cold, uh, but it's great to see James posting on there. Tony Hill, he's in Manhattan to see the 9-11 Memorial uh, at the New York Stock Exchange. That's a great photo. Mark Davis, Neffs Canyon near Mount Olympus. Turtle Miller, you're at a climbing gym. Um, it looks like your feet took you up. We'll let that slide because we did have Jeremy Haddock who decided that his foot took him to the pool um, so he can get some swimming in, um, which is awesome. A little cross training coming off of injury. Got to be safe because we need you back out there. Amara, uh, Malin's Peak, Megan Smith, Arch Canyon, Simon Hodgson, New Forest, England, some pigs out on the trail. Not something we see here every day. Anetta Zapatella. Ohio, I bet it was cold there. It looks like it with some emojis. Jeff Hart, friend from Bellingham, lots of snow in that photo. There's a lot of snow in these photos, and I guess we'll have to get used to that. Lee Moss, crossing windy Wyoming. And I know that's freezing cold because I've been there. Uh, another one from the island, Sarah Moore. Uh, Rachel Ziller, um, heal up, Rachel. I know you just went through some meniscus things, so get better soon. Tim Sanchez on Antelope Island with his homies. That's a great shot of uh, that group. Trevor Fuchs in Hawaii. That's another island photo we had. That's gorgeous. Uh, Gifford uh, Pinchot, and if I got that wrong, please accept my apology. Uh, Codles Canyon, Western Colorado. Brian uh, Nicholson here, but Malins. And our friend Christopher Fell from Germany. Minus one degree Celsius in Pottsburg, Germany. So it's great to see him back. Cade Brown's got a great, great shot from New Hampshire of a sun halo, and that is gorgeous. You know, if you have, if you can, head over to the Facebook page just to check these photos out because they're awesome. I mean, people take the best shots. I wish I could. Uh, Trina Cellino from Black Canyon, social distance start line. Mike Pace, Art Nord Trailhead. Tim Ruiz with a great shot. I'm not sure where that is, Tim. And then we've got Jesse Kokatek uh, posted through Facebook, through Instagram, uh, the Virginia Creeper Trail at night over a bridge, some sweet lighting, uh, just gorgeous. This week was the toughest since I've been back. And be honest with you, I'm going to say the toughest in a lot of ways. It came down to a few. Um, I, and then I kind of went with uh, the likes because that helps, right? So, okay, people like this. Uh, Katie Michelle Barney of the West Mountain Sunset here in Utah. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. It almost looks like a painting. Uh, the colors, the clouds, the, the water. I mean, it's just, it, it's got it going on. Uh, but this week's winner, I love, from Goosenecks State Park, Megan Smith. Congratulations on being this week's Woody Footy winner. This is such a gorgeous shot. Again, I wish I was standing there right now checking it out. So, Congratulations, Megan, and thank you so much for everybody uh, that takes the time to post Woody Footies every week, these gorgeous shots. Keep spreading the word. Keep sharing it with people. Let's really grow this thing. Um, but Megan, congratulations. You are a finalist for the month of February. Uh, by my calculations and math, we'll have one more for February, and then hopefully we'll do a little voting to see who the winner is for the month of February that will go into the final for Woody Footy of the year which you got it this will be the first time we've done woody footy of the year so you know you know the bragging rights the prestige prestige worldwide the prestige of being woody footy of the year has got to be pretty good first one ever it's like the course record right first time around this block so again thanks again for everybody i want to wish all the people out there that are running and racing this coming weekend good, good luck please be safe and again, the Trail Manners flags are a hit, apparently, because I'm getting uh, messages. Again, if you want to go and use one of these Trail Manners flags to take at a race, maybe a start-finish line, you don't got to take it during the race and take photos because you're racing, folks. Do you want to go for it? 
Or if you're going to a cool spot, hitting a peak, cool location, let me know. Send me a message, manners at trailmanners.com. I'll send you one of the Trail Manners flags if we have one because there's only four and they're kind of heating up. Um, I'll send those out to you. Take them where you're going. Sign them with your name in Sharpie. Send them back. Let's uh, let's see where we can get these guys throughout the year. So we'll jump into the Ask Trail Manners. And we got a, some great questions this week. Um, you know, I had some great questions last week. I appreciate that. Every Saturday, we'll throw that out on Facebook. Or you can just message me at manners at trailmanners.com. And let me know what's your Ask Trail Manners question. So let's start off right now. Oh, my gosh. Cameron from Billings, Montana. How do I run right now? Minus 24 degrees. Yowza. And he, to his credit, he posted a photo and he's got some, some sickles growing. It was chilly, downright chilly. Well, Cameron, first off, I want to tip my hat or my trucker hat to you for being that, oh boy, crazy, strong, bold. I wish I could do it, but I think if it was that cold, I don't even know if I would run. I, I wear shorts all winter long. And I, I mean, obviously that'd be a pants day, I, even, if, you know, for a weirdo like me, but that's just cold, man. That is freezing. So, um, dedication, little, uh, mind check, maybe whatever it is. Um, I don't know how you do it, to be honest with you. Just layer, um, Christmas story kid running down the street. Just don't tip over or just, uh, I don't, I wouldn't do a treadmill. I would just take either day off or get on some weights, some kettlebells, whatever, but that's cold. So I don't know how you do it. Um, maybe you should tell us since you did it. So wowzers next up from good friend of the show. We sure have missed, uh, this name, uh, Dave, uh, Stevenson. He said, first off, so happy you're back. Loving the new format as well. So my question relates to salt intake. My a race was postponed from February to my anniversary weekend. Needless to say, I've deferred until next year. Okay, I'm going to stop there and say, Dave, good choice. However, because I'm unbelievably stubborn at times, I'm doing my own 100 miler. Now, if you don't know Dave or listen to past shows, he is stubborn and he's going to do some cool stuff no matter what. He's going to figure a way to get it done. He says, just wondering what you would think would be a good frequency of salt intake for a 30 plus hour 100 miler. I do have salt tablets and a plan on having salty snacks and pickle juice at my aid station, and I sweat like a pig most of the time. Thanks, Dave Stevenson. Well, first off, we're in the same boat. I sweat like a hog. It's uh, it's not a pretty thing. And it's oh, this is a tough question, and I'm going to tell you why, because everybody's different. Um, we talk about it a lot on the podcast. You want to train how you're going to run so you know how your body um, likes or dislikes things. But when you get into that hundred mile or, or late, you know, a lot of hours, I mean, 30 hours, obviously you just don't know a lot of times, right? So what works on a five, six hour training one run may not work on something a little bit longer. And as we've all found on some level, me, unfortunately, um, if I've, I've run a hundred miler before and I felt like my nutrition worked and the next hundred miler did the same thing and it didn't work. There's effort, there's heat, there's so many things involved with this that I think it's difficult to just say, here's what you absolutely should do. And I know everybody's got an opinion. Some people say, oh, it's not about the salt. Um, some people say, oh, you can't take too much. You got to mix it with this. Tablets aren't good. I mean, it's really across the board. And I'm, at the end of the day, I say this about any nutrition um, in, the, in the ultra world, it's just personal. It really, your body is going to work differently than mine, um, than someone else's. So you really got to dial it in with your own. My biggest thing would say have variety, right? So don't limit yourself. If it's a true salt thing, uh, make sure that you get a variety, you know, so you're not always having like pickle juice all the time or salt tabs all the time. Mix it up. Um, make sure you're drinking fluids. You got to make sure that salt um, gets in your system. And you got to do that with fluids. I've made the mistake before of doing probably too much salt and not enough liquid to kind of help disperse it. And I just looked awful. Um, I had dogs running from all over the place just to lick me. I was so salty. Uh, but I do have this um, 
I've been looking into a little bit. And if you have an opportunity, head over to, and again, we're not sponsored in any way by this organization. It's something I found. Um, it's called precisionhydration.com. And I've done this. And this is why I, I want you to check it out, Dave. Maybe, uh, and it's, it looks pretty cool. I haven't gone. I haven't gone all the way with them yet, uh, maybe to second base, but Precision Hydration, if you head to their website, on the front page, it says, get a free hydration plan. Um, free, I love that, especially with this podcast. So you click on that, and it takes you to you know, a little thing that talks about your sodium, uh, drinking water, and sweating, and there's a get started. So I'm going to walk through this with you real quick, and this I think this is something good for all listeners just to check out. Um, I will probably check it out even more, but I've taken the little quiz and you hit get started. What's your main sport? And it has a bunch listed. So I obviously click running. Where do you, where do you most, where do you do most of your training? It says trails and roads. I hit trails. What kind of runner are you? Recreational, competitive, elite, or professional? Could be tricky on some level. Um, I'm going to put recreational uh, because that just sounds cool. How long do your key races last. Now here's where we, you know, we'll get into it a little bit, but it's got less than one hour and different ones and then hours four plus. So I click on four plus hours. Do you ever race in hot or humid conditions? Never, rarely, sometimes, often. So again, this is where I'm telling you that it really depends on what you do. You can take this quiz if it's a winter race and you might say hot and humid, never, maybe for that race or often. And um, I'll put sometimes kind of middle road how many hours are you training each week? Less than five goes all the way up to 15. Uh, so we'll just hit 15 plus hours. How much of your training is done in a hot environment? That's like indoor training as well. Um, we'll put more than half. How would you classify your sweat rate? They have low, moderate, high, very high. They don't have hog high. I would click hog high, but I'm going to hit very high because I do sweat. How much salt do you think you lose in your sweat? So again, this is kind of a a guess a little bit, but you can talk about um, sweat on your face, the crystals, getting sweat in your eyes, on your kit. And so I just say quite a bit. How often do you get muscle cramps? Okay, I'm sometimes because I totally do. So here, here's where they give you a little bit. You know, they probably collect your info to get your results, but you need to fill your name and email address and then view your results. Well, I've done this with them before. And the cool thing is it'll give you like information and I, I'm not going to click it again because I've already done it, but it gives you information on your the quiz you just took. And I don't know if you can take it multiple times to get multiple answers. I haven't tried that. And this isn't the only stop, but it's just the timing of it with uh, Dave's question I thought was pretty unique. So when I click on it, um, it gives you, and I'll go with, I found mine I did in January. Here's a summary of your race day hydration strategy. Um and it gives you, you know, it tells me I'm a very, you know, people benefit from drinking electrolytes, blah, blah, blah. But then it talks about what to do. Um, and it does have a little bit of information, obviously, on their product um, because, you know, hey, that's what they do. Um, but during the race, it tells you, like, before your race, during the race, even after your race, some tips. Um, I love it um, because it just gives you a good idea. And then it tells you, oh, here's the starter pack we have for you. You can buy it. Well, I mean, you can or you can't. I think it's an awesome situation just to kind of read their information of how to experiment with things, how to try things, sipping on stuff, how much to drink, um, all those things. But the cool thing is um, when you review your full hydration plan, you can click on that email they send you. It's even more uh, detailed. Um, it gives pricing on like a starter kit. Again, I'm not saying buy it. I don't get sponsored by them or anything. Did I buy a starter kit? Nah, I got a starter kit because I'm always checking stuff out. Um, but they also, you can restart your test. But on there somewhere, once you you get it through, I think you can get like a free consult if you buy something. They'll actually cons consult with you. And I think that's pretty neat. Um, it's not just a company that looks like, here, take our stuff, buy it, and go. Um, they'll actually, I don't have to get on a phone or an email because I haven't done it. But it's like a consult with you to kind of help you through that. So that's my advice to you, Dave. Check that website out. And if there's more out there, let me know because I, I think it's a pretty cool thing that these guys do. Um, you know, obviously there's some science behind it, and you can check out the about us and the you know the athletes that they have. Um, but I think it's a good starting point um, for you, Dave. And also, um, even though it's their product, right? It still gives you levels of oh 
salt intake. So what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to reach out to him to see if we can get him on the podcast. I think this would be a great one, especially with, you know, hopefully warmer weather coming and people racing and everything else. I'll reach out. We'll see if we can get him on the podcast and maybe uh, I'll let you know ahead of time and, and somehow through social media or maybe through a single track say, hey, we're going to have these guys on. What questions do you have for them? Um, and I think that'd be kind of fun, like a nutritionist side. Uh, but Dave, that's what I would suggest. Check stuff like that out because it is so, I mean, I guarantee you right now, uh, me and you will probably be completely different even though we're heavy sweaters. Um, I've actually, personally, I use um, Scratch Labs for a lot of my electrolyte drink because it, to me, it's not just about the salt, but how you take the salt in. I can't do tablets. I used to do those early on in my hundreds and they just, I'm not saying they didn't work, but I just seemed to always not feel good. Right. And I think it's because of the delivery method. But when I do it through a drink, and Scratch Lads has some great, for me, great flavors, not too sweet. And they have different products. Like if you need, you know, you're cramp and they've got like an emergency one, they've got a daily one, and then of course the race one. That's one I've always used. And I haven't had a problem with it like I have had with other companies. And I haven't tried them all. I've tried a lot. Um, but sometimes if I find something, I like to stick to it. Um, I did order the precision hydration stuff because I thought it'd be cool to try and I haven't tried it yet. I haven't needed to, but uh, maybe we'll try it before we get them on. So I have a little bit more knowledge to, to talk about, but great question. I know I probably didn't help you a ton. Um, the only thing I would say is, is, you know, check that website or others if you find it and just have a good mix and then try to get some long runs, which I know you do anyway. Um, but just be prepared to not be prepared, right? You be prepared to have, to want something you won't have and whatever that is, just take it with you. Um, cause you never know what's going to taste good, especially if you're kind of doing a loop thing where you're always going back to the same aid station or spot, just have a nice, Oh, and even some solid foods, have a nice, uh, variety. That's the word I'm looking for. All right. Next one up, another longtime friend of the show, Christopher Pack. This is our last Ask Trail Manager question this week. Christopher asks, how do you find motivation to get started back up running after a long break and too many cheese curds? Seriously, too many cheese curds since moving to Wisconsin. The cheese curd to mile ratio is not good. Well, Christopher Pack, why would you send that to me, number one, because you know I'm jealous. Wisconsin, someone actually uh, mailed me um, a couple years ago uh, some <laughs> cheese curds from Wisconsin, and I've still never forgotten about those. It was like spiritual. And a, and a, a pint glass for drinking beer. I run for beer and cheese curds. My favorite pint glass. I don't use it a lot because I'm scared I'm going to break it. Uh, but Christopher, first congratulations on being in Wisconsin. Um, just the fact that cheese is off the charts, that's enough for me to even be there. But this is a really good question and I've struggled with it. I know a lot of people do. We've had this question before and this is what I have found. Um, and even talking with other people too, um, it's hard sometimes because there's nothing worse for me than to get back into shape because you know what it takes to get to where you were, right? Even you know, when you weren't like peaked, right? When you're just kind of average there or getting there, the buildup sometimes can be discouraging. Um, I know we've all faced it in something, you know, whether it's, you know, a diet or weightlifting or running or you, know, you name it. It's sometimes can be discouraging because it's like, say you've been off for a while and you go out for that first run. You're so excited. You're nervous. You do it. And you're like, oh my gosh, that run used to take me X. And today it took me three times as long. And sometimes you do, you get discouraged. So what I say to try or do opinion wise, cause I do this and it's, it helps me. If you're getting back, don't take your watch, right? You, you may or may not, depending, maybe you're, you know, say you're new to, new to Wisconsin because you moved from Colorado where you're used to the same trails. Like I know where I can go on my local trails and exactly what the distance might be or whatever. Just go out and, and run. Just go out and run walk. Just go out and do the yogging thing, whatever it is. But don't put a, a watch on. Don't do anything with your phone. Don't track your miles, track your pace. Don't do any of that. Do that a few times. And to me, what that does is gets me back in the mood of why I'm out there. Because, you know, if, if you don't 
like it, if you don't love it, you really got to ask yourself why you're doing it. I think trail running is something you, that most people love, right? I, I take it past like, right? It, uh, if you don't love it, it's harder. If you don't like it, it's harder. If it's something you do, and at that point, if you don't like it or love it, I'm not sure why you're doing it. Maybe it's to, you want to do a race, or maybe you're trying to impress somebody of the, uh, you like them, right? Or whatever, right? Why are you doing it? That's the first question I say. Why am I getting back into it? Well, because I miss it, right? And why do I miss it? Because I love it. Just remember that. Remember what you do. Be very, you know, raw with what you're doing. Like I said, don't put any pressure on yourself. It's going to take time to get back out there. But to me, it's all about that mental side of why you do it. Um, if, if you want to get back into running and you hate a treadmill, but it's cold and you jump on a treadmill, chances are you're not going to enjoy it because you already don't like treadmills to begin with. So if you're doing it, explore, maybe, maybe hit a new trail, maybe hit a new location you've never been before, because then you're caught up in checking out what you're doing as opposed to focused on, you know, even, Hey, okay, I know that part is two miles if I get to that point. So Take the mileage out of the equation. Take the time out of the equation and just explore. Be a kid, right? Just do that. As you do it, just try to take your mind off it or try and remember good moments sometimes like of a race, of a run, with your friends, whatever it is. But take the pressure off yourself by having to run and take the pressure off yourself by putting a mark of where you think you need or where you should be because that's going to vary with everybody. Um, but I know a lot of people struggle with that. And again, please, listeners, if you have other ideas on any of these Ask, Man- Ask Trail Manners questions, please you know, post them on the website, post them on the Facebook page, whatever it is, just tag or post in the comments um, for Single Track Session Episode 303. And that helps, right? Or even on the community page, I will relay the messages or get to them because at the end of the day, we're, we're here to help each other, I hope. And everybody has advice good or bad or indifferent, but like I said, everybody's is different. So you're listening to mine because it's my podcast um, and you may not agree with it. And that is so good. I hope that's the case on some things. Let's uh, I'll remember we can all have our own opinion um, because you know what? Maybe you've got a better idea than me and I go, Oh, I want to try that. Um, I'm not there yet. I, I still got a little bit of my fitness and I'm, you know, working on it with some stuff, but uh, please, share your experience, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, because uh, it all helps, right? Just make sure it's in opinion based and it's, you know, not negative. We don't need that here. That's, that's fooey caca. So thank you so much, Dave, Cameron, and Chris for sending in this week's Ask Trail Manners questions. I look forward to more next week. Um, I'm, I'm super excited to get down to Moab this weekend. I can't tell you, hopefully three to four, you know, runs, not big ones, uh, in some beautiful areas and some trails I've never been on. So I'm kind of going back to what um, I mentioned with Christopher, just to kind of explore and get ready. Cause I, my, my stuff starts quick. Um, my girlfriend, Sarah's around the Buffalo hundred. I got a pacer, uh, through the night, which I'm not super thrilled about on Antelope Island with the, uh, with the bison out there. Um, but I'm gonna do it and I know she's going to kill it, but I got to be ready for that. And then we got the Grand Canyon rim to rim to rim the first weekend in April. And you know that's a butt kicker. And so I got to get ready for that. So I've got to get after it myself. So help me with some advice, folks. So this is my question of the week to everybody. I'm going to ask once a week a different question. My question to you, please comment on our Facebook page under this podcast. Your first ever trail race. It does not have to be an ultra. What's your first ever trail race? If they've got an account, tag them so we can check them out and we can show our love. Mine was the Greenlands. Well, my first trail race was the Buffalo Run 25K, the very, very first year Jim Skaggs did it. I was way out of my element. I had no clue. I had no podcast to listen to. I had no Ask Trail Manners. I had no idea where to find advice other than one person, and I... Man, it was ugly with what I, the way I dressed and what I took with me. But my first ultra was right after that, the Greenland 50K. 
um, in Colorado. It was a four loop course. That was my first ultra. And that's where I swore I'd never run again. Um, I obviously lied to myself cause I have, but what's your first ever trail race again, does not have to be an ultra. What's your first trail race? Some people are always looking for a good short one to, uh, post on Facebook under this one, tag them, share us our love, but I'm interested to hear what you have to say. So, that's pretty much it for this week, folks. It's been uh, it's been good to be back. Thank you. Keep the emails, the messages, the questions, the suggestions. Keep them all coming in because we're going to keep steamrolling this. And this is going to keep rolling downhill, just getting bigger and better. Hopefully, the rust is starting to kick off a little bit more. Um, but yeah, check out our website, trailmanners.com. We've got shirts and beanies on there for sale to help support the podcast. We've got a Strava page at Trail Manners. It's grown to like 700 plus people on that. Uh, our website's going to have some uh, columns written by guest writers. If you're interested in that, let me know. We've got a Patreon page if you want to support us. We've got a donation button if you want to support us. And my favorite of all of them is reviews and subscriptions. So check out iTunes. Leave us a written or typed review. I love those. So thanks for people that are doing that. And just keep sending me messages. What do you want to see? Right? What do you want to hear on the show? Who do you want to hear on the show? What topics do you want to see discussed? Um, send them my way. We're here for you. We want to make this a fun experience for everybody. And just remember, who cares what's next? Just experience the now. Right? Experience what you got going on now. Um, everything changes. So enjoy it. Thank you so much again for listening to the Trail Manners podcast. This is episode 303, a single track session. My name is Eric Manning, and I am out. Thank you.